Hello and welcome to Criminology 4325 Profiling. Uh, in this lecture today, we're going to be discussing the Irish Republican Army and primarily their history and development uh, and some of the work that they did um, throughout the history of Ireland and the fight between the Irish uh, and between the Irish and the English on this fight over control of the British Isles. So starting with the Irish Republican Army okay, and the history. In the early 1600s, King James I ordered Protestant settlements in Ireland. Okay, He, as a way to combat Catholicism, and I guess I can start from the outset. This war in Ireland between the British and the Irish is a religious war. It is a fight between the Protestants and the Catholics. And in the early 1600s, King James, in order to establish his rule in Ireland as part of the British Isles, he ordered Protestant settlements into Ireland. And they went into north. Um, Northern uh, Ireland, North Ireland. So James sent Scottish settlers into Ireland as landowners. Okay. The Catholic residents were put out of their homes. They were um, made homeless and disenfranchised from the effectiveness or from being part of the community. Upon James the first death, James the second took the crown in England and returned England and all of its territories to the Roman Catholic Church. And by 1688, the Protestants sent, you know, the, uh, from Holland, the, they sent William and Mary to take England back. And we, William and Mary became um, the rulers. Uh, James II took off to France. William and Mary became the rulers of England, and then they returned the British Isles to Protestantism. And during all of this time, there have been wars back and forth and fights between the Church of England and the Baptists and the Methodists and um, all of these other, the Anglicans um, versus the Catholic Church. And so in 1690, it was the Battle of Boyne. Uh, William had 36,000 men, and James had 25,000 men. Again, Protestants versus the Catholics. There's the largest number of troops that were ever deployed on an Irish battlefield in Ireland. Okay, so you have all of these individuals that are sorry about that let me turn my phone off okay so this is the largest war the largest battle that between the front between the catholics and the protestants that ireland had ever seen okay the english scottish irish dutch danish and the french huguenots made up william's armies okay and james army the jacobites were mainly irish catholics reinforced by 6,500 French troops that was sent by Louis XIV. Okay, so we have this massive Catholic force facing up against this massive English force over the fight and the control of Ireland. Uh, at stake was the British throne, the French dominance in Europe, and religious power within Ireland and the control. So the Battle of Boyne uh, was fought on the 1st of July, 1690, at a fordable river bend four miles west of Drag Dragheda. And the main body of the Williamite infantry was concentrating on the river uh, at Old Bridge, which was approached by a deep and sheltering glen. Okay. The detachment of cavalry and infantry made a flanking attack upstream, which forced James to divert troops to prevent his retreat, uh, 
William's army was stronger by at least 10,000 men. Uh, these troops were drawn off. He had a three to one superior in the main arena. Once these, you know, by mid afternoon, the Jacobite army was in retreat, uh, outpaced by James himself. Uh, nobody was running faster from the battle than James. Uh, and he rode into Dublin to warn the city of William's approach. Uh, and then he was in France before the end of July. Uh, it was a complete rout. On the 6th of July, William entered Dublin, where he gave thanks for his victory in Christ Church Cathedral. Uh, and he prayed and worshiped to God in a Catholic cathedral. Uh, some 15,000 people died in this first battle uh, between the Catholics and the Protestants. The Sinn Féin was established in 1905 by author Griffith. Sinn Féin is Gaelic for we ourselves. And the main aims of the Sinn Féin was to aggressively seek self-government and to overthrow British rule. Uh, this group, along with the Irish Republican Brotherhood, wanted total and complete independence, forming the Republic of Ireland. In response, the Ulster Protestants uh, created their group of people. In 1910, the Irish Unionism gained a new leader, which was Edward Carson, uh, and a lawyer and member of parliament for the Dublin University. In 1911, he told a large rally on the outskirts of Belfast to prepare to take over the government of Ulster if a home rule bill is passed. In September of 1912, he was among half a million men and women who signed a solemn league and covenant pledging themselves to use all means necessary to defeat the present Catholic conspiracy uh, to set up parliament in Ireland. In 1913, the Ulster Unionist Council announced the formation of the UVF, or the Ulster Volunteer Force. This was a militia group, uh, and some of the military drilling had begun. Before long, there were 90,000 men that had recruited into the Ulster Force. They were poorly equipped uh, until a council commissioned a Belfast businessman a major Fred Crawford to purchase arms from Germany. Uh, by 1914, we are in the midst of World War I. 35,000 rifles and 5 million rounds of ammunition were smuggled by the Germans into Larne Harbor uh, and swiftly distributed throughout the process, not to the Ulster Protestants, but to the Catholic Irish who made a with Germany to fight against the British. Declaration of Independence of Ireland. Um, and this it, it reads it here, and I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but you can read it yourself. Um, but it created a provincial government of the Republic of Ireland, established an independent nation, uh, and it was signed by Thomas Clark, Sean uh, McDermott, Thomas McDonough, P.H. Pierce, uh, Eamon Kent, James Connolly, and Joseph Plunkett uh, all signed the Irish Independence uh, Declaration of Independence. The Easter Rebellion came about um, on Easter. <laughs> it was Easter Monday rising. However, uh, no such military, and this was also in, in 1914. There was always, of course, a chance that German success on the Western Front would break through England's defenses and allow substantial help to be sent before the rising was crushed. Uh, and this proved to, to be wrong. The Catholics of Ireland uh, were routed by the British and the Germans uh, were unable to help them. Okay, and I'm sorry, this was uh, Easter Monday, 2016. April 24th, the Dublin battalions paraded bearing full arms and one day's rations 
shortly after noon, the general post office of the four courts, three of the railway terminals, along with other important points circling the center of Dublin, were rushed and occupied by the Irish Republican Army. Okay, so the Rising itself, uh, the first day of the Rising, there was very little fighting. Um, the Irish Republican Army went and they occupied these locations. The British were wholly unprepared. They had believed that the volunteers had abandoned the project. Uh, the British authorities were taken by surprise and could not immediately muster significant forces to uh, crush this insurrection. On Tuesday, the British force of 4,500 men attacked the rebel strongholds, secured the castle. A cordon was then drawn around the north of the city. Uh, some of the rebel outposts were attacked uh, and were broken and destroyed uh, by rifle and artillery fire. There were large reinforcements being hurried um, into Ireland, uh, taking them off the Western Front. Uh, on the Thursday, uh, the forces pressed closer and penetrated the central scene of operations, which was Liberty Hall. Uh, Hall was shattered by gunfire uh, from the river, uh, and uh, there was a lot of the buildings on O'Connell Street that were burned to the ground. The lines of communications between the insurgents uh, was broken and British forces crushed absolutely crushed the the insurgency uh, however the at the general post office the republican flag still flew in uh, county galloway uh, led by a large body of insurgents the galloway city where a gunboat uh, in the bay uh, dispersed them by shell fire and the Navy, british royal navy uh, crushed the insurgency in galloway at athenry uh, the insurgent camp was surrounded and dispersed uh, with the hopelessness of resistance became clear and you know that the British was just going to destroy it. On Friday of the Easter Rebellion, a terrific bombardment had set the center of Dublin on fire. The churches, the banks, the businesses, uh, they pretty much firebombed the entire city of Dublin. Uh, the death toll among the non-combatants was appalling. The British did not care if they were members of the insurgency or if they were just Catholics living in the street. They killed them all. Uh, Commandant Daly had destroyed the Linen Hall barracks uh, and was surrounded. Countess Merkiewicz uh, was driven out of the trenches in Stevens Green, uh, was defending the College of Surgeons and the medical school. Uh, Jacob's factory was surrounded uh, on Saturday at 2 p.m. Uh, the Irish Republican Army and the, the volunteers were absolutely uh, routed and they surrendered unconditionally to Sir John Maxwell. The rising ended, but, you know, and the outstanding forces were forced to lay down their arms. All of the signatories of the Declaration of Independence were hung. Uh, some of the death sentences were commuted to sentences of life imprisonment, uh, allowing others uh, to escape the death penalty. Uh, after a year, the prisoners were released for the purpose of English propaganda in America. Uh, so, out of this nightmare comes Michael Collins. Michael Collins was born in 1890 in County Cork. Uh, at the age of 15, he immigrated to London, where he worked as a clerk for the post office. He found his feet in a strong Irish community in London. He joined the Gaelic Athletic Association. He became a jock or an athlete. In November 1909, he was introduced to the Irish Republican Brotherhood in London. Uh, at this time, the IRB was in decline. Uh, primarily because of the failure of the Irish Parliamentarian Party uh, to achieve home rule. Uh, because they failed, uh, the IRB was also failing. 
but it did attract younger members to the organization. Shortly after joining the IRB, uh, Collins left the post office and took up a post as a stockbroker in a stockbroking company at Whitehall Labor Exchange. Before returning to Ireland, he worked at with an American firm, the Guarantee Trust Company, also in London. Uh, but in 1916, he returned to Dublin to take part in a, another planned insurrection. He received the volunteer's uniform and was um, given the rank of captain. Second in command uh, was Joseph Mary Plunkett in the post office during Easter week. Collins made no secret that he admired the realism of men like Sean McDermott, uh, and he wanted to emulate or repeat uh, the Easter Rising uh, because the South will rise again, and Southern Ireland was going to rise again, and they were going to succeed this time. Collins walked across the room when they selected those to be a executed and was spared um, because again, they failed again. Following the rising, Michael was a prisoner of war sent to Richmond Barracks and later to Frognach internment camp in Wales. He returned home to Ireland in December of 1619. Again, I'm sorry, that was during the Easter rising. Um, it was at Frognach where Michael Collins ability as an organizer and a community organizer was realized. Uh, he rebuilt the IRB and became the commander of the IRB. In January 1919, uh, the Anglo-Irish War began with the first shots being fired at Shulhedbeg. Uh, over the next year, the Royal Irish Constabulatory became the target of the Sinn Féin, the Sinn Féin uh, terror campaign. Michael Collins orchestrated this campaign through selective terrorism. He created an intelligence service with spies all over Ireland, Ireland including uh, the British Army headquarters. By mid-1919, the IRB had infiltrated the leadership of the volunteers and were directing the pace of the violence. Collins himself had been made president of the IRB same time, he was defense minister for finance in the Dáil government and was the commander of the Irish Republican Army. And this is where we start seeing the IRA come about. In June of, 20, of 1919, uh, de Valera left for America. Michael Collins became the acting president of Ireland. Uh, after Griffith was arrested in 2019, I mean 1920. The British responded with violence, savagery violence. Um, they had special uniforms known as the black and tans. Uh, they were sent to enforce curfews and martial law upon the Irish. These forces, like I've already said, were known as the black and tans. Um, after a popular limerick hunt group and because of their dark green khaki uniforms another force of veterans from the great uh, from world war one were called the auxiliaries and they joined them thus they became a pattern of assassinations and reprisals every time the ira would strike the black and tans would strike back the black and tans although they said that they were targeting the ira they targeted everybody. Um, the initial distaste for the killing of um, the Rick men by the IRA gave way to the outage, outrage at the savageness of the Crown forces. Okay. The reprisals had the effect on identifying the British as the oppressors of the Irish people. By November of 1920, Michael Collins' squad assassinated 14 or on the 21st of November. They assassinated 14 British officers, destroying the British Secret Service in Ireland. The reprisals of the Black and Tan was that they fired on a crowd watching a football game at Croke Park. They had this armored 
carrier with a machine, you know, this troop carrier, these jeeps, um, personnel carriers um, with machine guns on top of it. They just, the black and tans drove these um, trucks into the middle of the soccer game, uh, what they call football, um, and just opened fire on all of the spectators and the innocent people. 12 people were killed, uh, including one of the team players. The day became known as Bloody Sunday. Okay. And news of this um, and other horrors of the Black and Tans was spread throughout the world, uh, especially in the United States. And the IRA was able to collect a lot of money and a lot of um, funds to help fight against the British and the British oppression in Ireland. Okay, so knowing that neither a republic nor United Ireland could be won at any conferences, the Valara refused to attend. Instead, he sent Arthur Griffith and Michael Collins at, to head up the Irish delegation. Neither Griffith nor Collins wanted to go. Collins declared that he was a soldier, not a politician, uh, but the issue went to the cabinet and it was decided um, Collins went uh, along with Griffith. They knew that it would be received badly in Dublin, but they decided to step toward Irish independence and they wanted to focus that and getting closer to Irish independence was more preferable than an all out war with the British because unlike the United States, which was thousands of miles away, uh, Ireland would not be able to fight off a British army, especially now that the British army was not fighting a world war in Europe. Um, Michael Collins spoke prophetically when after signing the treaty, he said, I tell you, I've signed my death warrant because he didn't, you know, he didn't agree with it, but he signed it anyway. And by the 22nd, of August 1922, both uh, men had died. Uh, Arthur Griffith died of a massive hemorrhage on August 12th, uh, and at eight o'clock on the 22nd, uh, Michael Collins' am convoy was ambushed at a place known as Fa'al Na Abla, uh, or the Mouth of Flowers. Uh, only one man was killed in this in this raid in this ambush, and that was Michael Collins. So, under the Anglo-Irish Treaty, Northern Ireland was provisionally scheduled to be included in the Irish Free State. It could not opt out should the Parliament of Northern Ireland elect to do so. Once it happened, as provided for Irish Boundary Commission came into being, and it decided that the boundaries between the Irish Free State and Northern Ireland, uh, which is depicted here in this map, uh, the leaders in Dublin expected a substantial reduction in the territory of Northern Ireland with the nationalists. Um, but what happened is this map. Ireland got its independence um, pretty much. Um, and then this little portion of Northern Ireland remained under British rule. Now, the British and Irish governments agreed to leave the boundaries as they were defined in the 1920 Act. Okay, and the Council of Ireland provided for a treaty to link Northern Ireland and the Irish Free State, but it didn't come into, be into being. And so, the terror began again. And that slide's missing. The IRA, in an attempt to... And, and what they're doing, or, or, or what the attempt is, or the thought is, is to reunite all of Ireland. So the Irish Republican Army would fight and they would conduct terrorist activities in Northern Ireland. The Protestants would go down and they would fight and they would commit terrorist actions in the free state of Ireland. Um, I was in England uh, in the 80s when uh, the IRA blew up Hyde Bridge uh, or Hyde Park in London. Uh, and this war just continued for a very long time because you know, 
this fight between the Catholics and the Protestants and to remove the Protestants from Ireland and to make all of the Irish island a unified country under Catholic rule. On 9-11, um, after 9-11, uh, President George W. Bush had made the proclamation that if you're a terrorist, we're coming to get you. Uh, we don't care where you're a terrorist, and the Sinn Féin and the Irish Republican Army agreed to lay down their weapons. Uh, and, you know, it's been kind of, I haven't tracked or followed any terrorist activities by the IRA since 9-11. Uh, so, you know, that dreaded attack on the U.S. soil and the response by the American government has brought a new attitude to the people of Ireland, to the Irish Republican Army, to the Sinn Féin, and the, the, the terrorism that was going on and plaguing the British Isles. Uh, so with that in mind, that was our history, uh, a brief history uh, of the Irish Republican Army. I am hoping that you will be edified by this little get together.